Podcast City Network. This is Final Score, your number one podcast for sports news. Here are your hosts, Chris and Craig. Hey guys, and welcome to another exciting episode of Final Score, episode 65. And I'm not going to lie, I think we finally got all the kinks worked out. I'm really excited for this episode. We're going to see what we can pull off. But before we can actually have an episode, I got to bring in none other than my awesome co-host, Craig Campbell. How you doing, bud? I'm doing well, man. We've uh, been we've been busy in the world of sports as of late, so we got a lot of stuff to get to today. But oh, yeah. uh, I've been doing great. We've got we've got we got a lot of stuff going on around my house as well. How are you guys doing this this weekend? Oh, hanging in there, man. Hanging in there. But uh, I know another guy hanging in there. <laughs> none other than Kevin Wathen. How you doing, man? Doing good. Uh, recovering. Got some uh, coffee this morning. Um, going out for a little end of my birthday week uh, tonight with uh, my grandma. So we're going to go out and have some lunch and uh, enjoy some good time spent together. So everything's going good. That's good, man. You can you can never have a full birthday week without spending some time with grandma. So, you know. Perfect mm-hmm. ending, man. Perfect ending. But you know what? We do have a great episode today. So much to talk about. A lot of craziness has been happening in the world of sports. But to make sure that you keep up with all things Final Score, you got to follow us on social media at PCN Final Score on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, and Instagram. Go give us a like. Go give us a follow. Share us to all your friends. And more important than anything, leave us a rating. Let us know how we're doing because we always try to bring the very best that we can. And uh, we know we've had a lot of technical issues lately, but think we got those fixed so we'll definitely see how it goes going forward but we're on a lot of content platforms too aren't we craig absolutely you can find any of our audio podcasts on spotify iHeartRadio, apple Podcasts, tune in stitcher podbean and on google Podcasts. Uh, you can also find the video versions such as the stream that we do every weekend all those can be found on youtube and any of the other content that we have any interviews we do anything related to the rugby review and, of course, with the Final Score stream team, all of it's going to be found on YouTube. To find us anywhere on these platforms, just search keyword Final Score. That's one word, Final Score, to find any of the content. No matter what what type of platform you listen on, we've got you covered. Absolutely. A lot of great stuff. And you can find us so many places now. And, you know, it's crazy, too, when I do searches every now and then. I always find out we're just on more and more platforms. So, hey, Final Score is getting out there, so check us out. <laughs> It's going to be good stuff. But to kick off the show, we're going to hit up none other than Kevin Wathen of the Rugby Review. What do you got for us, bud? I got a lot. Uh, Round nine just finished up in the NRL, and there's been some huge score lines, some awesome games to watch. Um, I woke up Friday morning at 5 a.m. to watch the Rabbitohs play. They came out victorious, which was awesome. They beat the West Tigers. They almost gave the game away, though. We're up 18-0 with probably 20 minutes left to go in the match, and West Tigers come back. They put Benji Marshall in the game. He uh, facilitates two amazing tries. Um, They get the scoreline back to 18-10, so brief scare there. The Rabbitohs are still trying to figure out without the other two um, Burgess brothers on the field. They're trying to work out all the kinks, so hopefully in these coming weeks they know how to finish out games because We've been very good in the first half, but for some reason in the second half, we seem to falter. Um, going a little bit in reverse, though, on Thursday morning, huge score line out of the Sydney Roosters. They beat the Cowboys 42-16. to um, Friday morning before the Rabbitohs kicked off, you had the Gold Coast Titans. Here's the shocker of this week. Gold Coast Titans, usually terrible. They're the Cleveland Browns of the NRL, the Detroit Lions of the NFL. Ouch. And they came out on top and beat the New Zealand Warriors 16-12, to so... They're doing good things this year. Man, so they came out of that match just being like, 
Just saying. <laughs> Just saying. I would. Uh, Saturday kicked off with another huge scoreline. The Perinth Panthers, 56-24, to or the Cronella Sharks. The Brisbane Broncos finally won. I think it's been like 190 days since they last won. They came out 26-8 wow. to eight over the Bulldogs. Um, Bulldogs are suffering. They're kind of on the bottom rung of the ladder there in the standings. Uh, Chris, your Melbourne Storm coming on top of the Canberra Raiders, 20-14. to 14. Close matchup there, hell of a game. Uh, the, right. Parama, uh, the Eels taking on the Knights in our Sunday matchup. Um, that one just finished up not too long ago. Final score of 10-4. to 4. Very low-scoring matchup. I haven't gone back and watched that game yet. I think it kicked off at 5 a.m., but that was a hard-hitting contest. So I'm excited to tune in and watch that matchup later today. And then the game that just finished up, we got a scoreline here, uh, 34-4, to the St. Illawarra Dragons knocking off the Manly Sea Eagles. So huge scorelines all over the place in round nine, which brings us to our ladder. And the Rapidos moving up from the ninth spot all the way to the sixth. So we're in playoff contention now. The Eels are still on top with 16 points on the, bot- on the top of the ladder. Panthers in second. Chris, your Storm are in third place right now. Sydney Roosters moving up a spot two to number four. Knights at five. Rabbitohs at six. Canberra Raiders at seven. And the West Tigers at eight. We're not even going to talk about the nine through the 16 because they're <laughs> out of playoff contention with the Bulldogs at the very bottom of the ladder. Um, so that pretty much wraps up NRL. I was going through my feeds and talking to some rugby league people around the world. And my good friends over at RugbyLeaguePlanet.com um, sent over this story to me, which I thought was very interesting. This is going on in Ghana, so the west coast of Africa, nicknamed the Gold Coast. Um, Ghana Rugby League, which launched not too long ago, they just started up a new campaign in Ghana called the Pretty Girls Play Rugby League Campaign because the stereotype around rugby league is it's a brutal sport, it's a rough sport, and um, women's leagues have shown very small numbers. So Ghana has taken a stand on this, and they launched a campaign, and it's specifically aimed at women and girls with the intention of having at least four women's clubs playing in Ghana, Africa um, by 2021. So huge initiative out of that. I give kudos to the Ghana Rugby League for starting this up. We need to see this happen in more places around the world to get rugby league going in the right direction. We don't, it just doesn't need to be just men inclusive sport. We need to include the women and the, um, the girls and start at a young age from elementary school all the way up through this ranks, just like we're trying to develop the youth program um, through the country as well. And we've seen this in the United States as well. The United States Rugby League has also um, added on to their plethora of teams. They added a women's team that will hopefully compete in the upcoming World Cups. So hopefully I have some more information on that in the coming weeks and can bring that to you and give you guys an update on who's coaching that women's team. And if I have any women listeners that are out there that are interested in playing, I'll have more details for you guys on that. But that pretty much wraps it up. USARL is still in a pending status with COVID, similar to all the sports out there. Um, We're just sitting and waiting. Um, other good news, I don't know if you guys know, if you guys are fishing fanatics, snapper season just opened up on Friday, runs through the end of the month, so I'm really excited to get my fishing poles in the back of the truck and head out there and catch some red snapper. My buddies have been uh, kind of making fun of me. They're like, it's already Sunday and you haven't even gone out there and caught one, and they're sending me pictures of these massive snapper they're oh, pulling yeah. out of the Atlantic Ocean, so I definitely got to get out there and hook into some, and that way I can fry them up on the grill later on in the day. Definitely, definitely. And uh, yeah, I got a bunch of buddies of mine right now going out and catching some snappers. So it's definitely going to be, I think, a very, uh, very fruitful season. So we'll see how it works out. But uh, does USA I'm just RL- hoping it's not like uh, I'm just hoping it's not like 109 degrees like it was yesterday. You walk yeah. outside and it feels like you took a shower. <laughs> yeah, Florida, Florida, Florida's bringing it hot. But does the USARL, though, have uh, any kind of an idea when they might have a return to play a plane or is everything just up in the air right now? It's up in the air right now. We haven't heard much from them. It's basically crickets coming out of the leadership out of the USARL, which is kind of unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Um, but they don't know anything because you got to wait on the city officials. you got to wait right. on the uh, state officials to give us a go on the fields. 
because that's truly the only thing we're waiting on. The good news that came out back in June is they signed our insurance for another year for this 2020 season. So that's showing that they did put some uh, some type of financial investment in this season saying, hey, we're going to pay for you guys' insurance so if players get hurt or liability and all that stuff. So they did pay for that for the 2020 season. That's so good. I doubt that they're just going to let that money go to waste. So I bet they're trying to get this thing sped up and try to have some sort of season. I do not see the North teams participating because obviously in areas like New York, New Jersey, um, up there in Massachusetts, they're um, much harder hit in those cities and uh, closer in quarters. Um, so it's rough finding fields up there. Even without this COVID thing, it's hard to find fields. So yeah. Hopefully it opens up soon. I'm looking forward to getting back on the field. I know I've just been putting in the training in the gym, and most of the guys I see through them from the USARL, they're hard at work in the gym. We actually have one uh, individual. He plays for the USA Hawks. He just traveled out to, I believe he's in San Diego or L.A., working with a speed guy out there. Uh, his name's Jamel Robinson. I got the opportunity to play with him out in Kingston, Jamaica. And this dude's a beast, and he keeps on getting stronger and faster. And uh, the competitive side of me is reaching out to him, and I'm like, you're not going to beat me. You're not going to be stronger than me. You're not going to be faster than me. Like, <laughs> let's push each other because competition is what, uh, what will bring the USA team farther up. Definitely, definitely. Some great stuff. And hopefully the USARL can get something going, and we can get back to action with the manliest sport in the world because, man, come on, hitting each other with no pads. What, what's better than that? Anyways, but to make sure that oh, you keep up. Sure. Oh, yeah. But to make sure you keep up with all things Final Score, you also got to check out our parent network, Podcast City Network. A lot of great stuff going on over there. If you don't know what anything about them, then what are you doing? Because Final Score is a proud member of Podcast City Network, and it's your home for up-and-coming independent podcasts, so you don't have to listen to all the commercialized garbage that you see on a lot of other networks. You get the real, genuine product here. And you can find Podcast City Network on Facebook at facebook.com backslash Podcast City Network, on Twitter at Podcast City Net, on YouTube by searching Podcast City Network, Work. And of course, you can always find Final Score there, podcastcity.net backslash Final Score. And you can also join Podcast City Network if you are a new or up and coming uh, podcast because they offer an array of membership services, including logo design and branding, social media advertising, live podcast hosting, and much, much more. You also gain access to our network of shows to help with cross promotion, guests, and overall reach while also becoming a part of our ever expanding PCN community based on people helping people. The best part is no membership fees. So, what are you waiting for? Go to podcastcity.net backslash join now and join the fastest growing independent podcast network around podcast city network. And you know, I know I love it and I've been enjoying the heck out of it with us being a part of podcast city network. And they seem like they're always growing. They're up to 20 shows now and some new ones are going to be coming out. So a lot of great stuff going on, but oh man, it's that time. Cause we've got to talk about something really serious. And that is what is happening in college athletics right now, because the Big Ten and the Pac-12 have both announced that they are going to be playing conference only schedules in all sports this fall. Craig, what do you think about all this? Uh, it's kind of what we were talking about uh, a couple months ago and whether should we even have college football or not. And <clears throat> I think I, I think this is just one step closer to canceling the season altogether. Uh, well, do I think they'll uh, they'll actually do it? Probably not, but I think they should. You know, you mentioned that we're just trying to we're trying to navigate through this pandemic. And I know the three of us have had a really in depth conversation it was your last mm -hmm. week, the week before, about depending on how you look at the numbers and look at the confirmed cases and all that kind of stuff. Take all that aside, we still have to get through this pandemic. And I think mm -hmm. the Ivy League the, did it the first time around when they canceled the spring sports. Everybody laughed at them. What are you doing? Why are you doing that? And then guess what happened a week later? The NCAA basketball tournament for the men's and women's sports were canceled. So uh, not really surprised. I'm not surprised that the Ivy League was the first one to do it yet again. I'll be really surprised if we have college football in NFL this year. But uh, that's just we, – we're really just playing it by ear as the week goes every week. So it's really – none of us know what's going to happen. And we're just kind of making the best of it right now. And this is the decision that we feel is right for college sports. Kevin, do you agree? Uh, I agree. I agree that Ivy League, I probably couldn't have gotten into any of those schools with my GPA. And they <laughs> probably see things <laughs> far ahead than what I see things. Um, they're a little bit smarter. So we may uh, 
may take notice. And uh, I see Big Ten reached out a couple days ago and said they're going conference only, and um, a couple other leagues have followed suit with that. Um, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say if it is canceled, we're just going to go ahead and claim it for uh, UCF National Champions 2020. <laughs> oh, we'll we're just go ahead again? and claim that. We're doing that again. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, we're on. doing that again. Hey, you're not the only one wearing gear around here. Okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> While we're at um, it, no. Western Michigan will claim the football too. Right <laughs> now, now let's not get ahead of ourselves, okay? We have no chance. We have no chance. <laughs> now, uh, college football, I would enjoy seeing it, um, but I do not want to see it like we had talked before. I don't want to see it with no fans in the stands. It's not going to be as exciting. That's what college football is all about is getting in there, supporting your alma mater, loud, uh, raucous, crowds and the environment is why people watch college football and it won't be the same if there's even 25 percent capacity in the stadiums we need to have it back and we need to have it back full of fans so i'm with craig on this one just go ahead and scrap the 2020 season as much as that's going to cause a lot of um uh, arguments a lot of debates a lot of uh, frustration to scrap the season come back mm -hmm. even stronger in 2021 I absolutely have to agree with that. But let's go with the with the idea that we're somehow still going to have this season. We see the Big 12 and the Pac-12 going to uh, these conference-only schedules. Uh, do you think that the ACC, Big 12, and the SEC are going to follow suit? Kevin, we're going to start with you. I'm going to tell you one thing. The SEC is going to be the last to do it. Um, mm -hmm. All these other – it's the ACC and the SEC will probably be the last two to go conference only because we have such avid fans down here. And the SEC, when they do it, um, they might be uh, protesting that big time. They may be, I mean, Alabama and Gator fans, they're going to go absolutely nuts mm -hmm. if um, they go ahead with the conference only slate. And how is that even going to look? You're going to take all your non-conference schedules away and go conference only. To me, that's not going to be as exciting. I, I like to see those cross matchups and Chris, uh, I'm going to throw this out here to you. If we do go conference only with all of this, what's going to happen to teams like Notre Dame? Oh. They're independent schools. Um, they're not going to have a season. So you're just going to throw Notre Dame to the side because these teams aren't going to be willing to go out of their conference. So Notre Dame, hindsight, probably should have joined a conference back in the day when they got the <laughs> invite. Yeah, uh, and, and me, I know me and Craig have definitely talked about this. They definitely should have joined uh, the Big Ten when they had the chance way back uh, in the early 90s. And – you know, for who sure. knows? Who knows what would have happened? And honestly, it would have made sense. But, you know, that's that's an argument for another day. But let's really dive into that. What <laughs> does happen to teams like Notre Dame and, and these independents that have no conference affiliation? Because don't forget, we still have four other schools like BYU and whatnot that have no conference affiliation. So uh, with Notre Dame, we're already seeing a lot of kickback because uh, the ACC is already expecting, along with the Big 12, to make a decision in late July about fall sports in general, whether they're going to go to uh, the conference-only type schedule, whether they're going to be like the Ivy League and scrap it all together uh remember the acc was one of the first ones to come out as well and, and really can't start canceling things for spring as well so it, it's something you got to look at going forward that if the acc decides to go to their conference only schedule well notre dame will be fine except for football so it just wonders what the impact does the contract really come into play at that point so many different questions that happen with it but Notre Dame, as it looks right now, from what they're hearing from their athletic department, is they're expecting that we're not going to start on time. Our season's going to get pushed back at the extreme least, uh, if not scrapped altogether. So they're now starting to prepare for the worst and not no longer taking the stance of, oh, it's all going to be okay. We're just going to keep on going because the rest of the country isn't. So I don't know. It's going to be interesting. But how impactful do you think this is going to be? Craig, we'll start with you. Uh, as far as a team like Notre Dame, it's funny because we <clears throat> we give we give you crap about your your school and not being at a conference. <laughs> but remember remember this that Notre Dame doesn't need the ACC. The ACC needs Notre Dame. So they <clears throat> they could get away with not having a season, and yeah, it's going to hurt them in the short term. But they can also look at if this college football season does play out and it's a disaster, Notre Dame can go. Well, we didn't play in it, so like they can just do one of these. Well, Oops. well, it wasn't us. Like, it wasn't us. <clears throat> they could if they wanted to, but I, I completely agree with Kevin. I mean, SEC is going to be the last, and but here's the here's the thing too. SEC, I know. What are you gonna do when you can't schedule high school teams on on your, you know, <laughs> for all your non-conference anymore? Oh, exactly. what are you gonna do? You actually have to play real football games every week. Oh my God. <laughs> What's Alabama those... gonna do? 
they bring in those cupcake teams like West Alabama to play before they have to play Auburn, or you have Florida bringing in like teams like Holy Cross uh, before they play, <laughs> or Furman before they play Florida State. It's like, yeah, you don't have the opportunity now. Now you have to play maybe at Alabama and then turn around and play Auburn the very next weekend. So Weird. it's going like to be every interesting. Other, like every other major conference in the in the country. So yeah. Um, but I think if this will be really impacted if we do try to push through with a season. I think it's going to be yes. a miti- unmitigated disaster, honestly, because I know I've seen little reports that either colleges, and I've even seen teams like the Jacksonville Jaguars, are talking about opening at 25% capacity. But college football, like Kevin said, is not all about – it's not about the game on the field. It's about the – uh, the atmosphere in the stadium and packing it full of a hundred thousand fans and, or more depending on where you're watching your game. Uh, and it's, it's all about that atmosphere and making sure that that's, that's gotta be part of the game. So I'd be really, really surprised if we do have a college football season, but I would not be, I wouldn't be shocked because the NCAA just, they're all about the money. They're they're all about making still making those advertising dollars. They don't give a they don't give a crap about the kids' well being. No, mm-hmm. not at all. And not at all. They still they Cash still will, as of right now tell the schools, yeah, go ahead and open up campus if you think it's fine. The schools are gonna want to open up campus so that way they can have football games. They want to open right. up so they can have their sports. Then it's just dumb. It's just it's yeah. dumb. Outright. You said it perfectly, Craig. You said absolute disaster, and that's what the NCAA is all about. They should have even – I feel bad for the athletes because they passed the um, – that they can get paid on their likeness, and that went through, what, last year? And now the football season canceled this year, so these athletes are going to go without making money on their likeness as well. That's another factor we got to throw into this. And then, like yeah. you said, if the stadiums are only opening up at, like, 25% or no fans at all mm-hmm. – I can say with confidence, because I've been in the stadium multiple times, it's like my second home uh, during the fall, the bounce house is not, we don't win those games. We don't beat Memphis in the American Championship if it wasn't for the crowd noise. We don't beat Cincinnati in that game. Chris, you're at the Cincinnati game. We do not win that game if it isn't for the crowd. I think they took seven full start penalties in that game just from the crowd noise alone. And, yes, it is a smaller stadium. It's only 45,000, 46,000. I felt that little jab, Craig, coming from you. We have a smaller stadium, but it is loud. It is impressive when uh, that aluminum starts hitting together. Yep. I will. I will give you that. The bounce house has that name for a reason. But the likeness is the likeness thing. The state of Florida has passed that for this year. I think California was, Chris. You, I think you would know this too. Is either twenty twenty one or twenty twenty two for goes California? Into, it goes into effect in twenty twenty one. Okay. So there. So so some of these kids it'll affect, but. Yeah, I, I, here's – and actually, I'm glad you brought up the UCF point because here's a here's conference that nobody's talking about yet. What about the American Athletic? How spread out are they? They're really going to make conference games, and people are spread out across the country. Schools are spread out. There's no way they're going to allow that. There's no, no. way. Because no. then you'd have to take an entire team like UCF and transport them all the way to Tulsa to play in a game up there in Tulsa. Um, granted – Actually, we went to Tulsa, so Tulsa would be coming down to us. But you're not going to take kids from Oklahoma all the way to Orlando, Florida, expose them, and potentially uh, have these kids introduced to – and what if you're on the road, say you travel from Tulsa to Orlando, and one kid contracts COVID, and you have to transport that kid or figure out resources to get that kid back home or get them the proper medical treatment? Do you – bring them to a hospital here in Florida and some of these hospitals are at capacity. Do you transfer them back to you're opening up a can of worms? Mm-hmm. The NCAA is that I, if I was in charge of the NCAA, I'd scrap the season. Like I said before, I'm not going to take all those risks. And and think about it too. NCAA is so very, so very unwilling to pay for anything for these kids. So if somebody gets, has to have a hospital stay. Guess what? The kids got to pay for it. Yeah. Oh, and you, yeah. the parents, the family can't pay for it. That's on. That's that's benefits. Like that's extra benefits. You can't do that. Now this. Now the kid's suspended. Now the team's gonna get a slap on the wrist. Mm-hmm. NCAA is a friggin' joke when it comes to this. But look at other teams. Uh, you had, who's the other teams? You got uh, Houston, SMU. You have Tulsa. You mentioned uh, even up in the Northeast, Navy. <clears throat> yep. Are you gonna take teams from all over the country and put them in hotbeds 
around the country, mm-hmm. like Texas and Florida and New York. And that's the thing you got to so. look at with all of it, too, is that, you know, if they get here and that kid gets sick, too, a lot of the laws right now are mandating that you have to automatically be quarantined in that state. So the team leave the kid behind, go back home. You know what I mean? And then you said mentioned Navy. Now you're bringing in an actual branch of the military into this. And now there's a whole bunch of stuff that ties to that as well. So it's there's it's honestly a powder keg that's getting ready to blow if they do not take proper action and just shut everything down. The Ivy League is, is really smart for a reason. Let's go ahead, close it down. Right. <laughs> where I'm at. Yeah, with I mean, this. look at Clemson. Uh, yeah. Gosh, the professional sports they can do that because these guys get paid. Yeah, we're talking different. about kids that are not getting paid, and you can't. NCAA is not going to approve. Yeah, if you get if you get uh, any any uh, medical costs or anything, we'll foot the bill for you. They're not going to do that. No, no, not at all. No way. Here's something. Here's a good thing that I might see come out of this whole thing is we talked about what's going to happen to Notre Dame, what's going to happen to the BYU, what's going to happen to I believe Army's independent too, right? Yep. If yep. I'm not mistaken, so you may see this like almost advanced stage of alignment. Um, I've talked about this from the start. Why not pull Army into the American Conference? So you have the Army Navy matchup in the American. That's going to further strengthen it, especially after the exit of UConn. We could accept another football uh, team. We put in the waiver to have a championship game with only 11 schools in there. Why don't you bring an Army during these unprecedented times, align them with the American. You have the Army-Navy matchup, which is on a Saturday where no other college football is played. And then Notre Dame, if the Big Ten reaches out this time and says, hey, we're going to invite Notre Dame during these unprecedented times, Notre Dame might say yes now. We're already the Big Ten Um, for hockey. what was that? We're already in the Big Ten for hockey, so why not? I know, why not? So you may see like this rapid alignment or alignment within these couple years until everything gets sorted. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised for some of those smaller schools. Notre Dame, there's so many, so many hoops you'd have to jump through to make oh, yeah. that happen. ACC, there's no way they would allow it for football or any mm-hmm. other sport because they basically <clears> – <throat> ACC's got – that got Notre Dame for all sports, but football. So, yeah. I mean, but I, I could see an RB doing that or a BYU doing that with like, maybe go back to the mountain West or something uh, for even for football. Cause yeah, I know it's different levels, but I mean, you got it. They have to do something if they want to play. Uh, but sure. yeah, it's, it's really going to be, uh, it's going to be a, a show, a certain kind of show, if you know what I mean, oh, when yeah. it comes to college football. But the big and thing, they have to do something to stay afloat because a lot yeah. of these middle tier teams are starting to feel the financial pinch. Um, Stanford just went ahead and canceled a bunch of sports. It was like 11 sports total just because they're already starting to feel the financial strain. If you do not pack that stadium at UCF, UCF's going to start feeling that financial strain. Oh, yeah. All these mid tier schools are going to start feeling it. And they're going to uh, start canceling the smaller sports like Stanford. We saw uh, canceled wrestling. They canceled rowing. They canceled, uh, I think, some type of same volleyball. The other sports, um, I think it was 11 in total. You're going to mm-hmm. start, uh, start seeing schools start canceling sports. And that's unfortunate with these times. And if, uh, like, an army aligns with the American Conference, they may get some TV dollars thrown their way that can help them survive this pandemic. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's going to be very interesting to see how this goes, because all of it really comes down to how quickly things can be mitigated, because the big thing that a lot of these universities, I feel, are trying to keep in mind is that there's a possibility we could do all this in spring and still be able to make a lot of that money back. But for that to happen, we have to be able to mitigate the entire growth of COVID, make sure that we are shutting everything down, taking all the proper steps, doing everything we can, which we know will only happen to a certain extent. So it, I feel everything really with all this is going to be really up in the air. And, and remember, all this is even contingent if they're even going to have a season. So I don't see it happening altogether. I think both of you agree with that, that it's a lost cause at this point. Let's just shut everything down. Let's protect people. Let's let's get people healthy and let's let's try and bull through so we can actually have sports for real with fans in the stadium. Because what's the point if you don't really? So I don't 100%. know. 100 percent. Absolutely. 2020. National champs claiming it. Oh my gosh, this guy's killing me. Let's go ahead. Let's go. Let's go ahead and talk about Pod Chaser, Craig. 
Yeah, let's talk about Podchaser. Podchaser is your daily source for podcast discovery. Apple Podcasts is no longer the only credible place to rate and review podcasts. You can follow individual creators. You can in, you could follow every podcast ever made, and you can even rate and review not only the shows but individual episodes. You can find us on Podchaser, Podchaser.com. Just search keyword "final score" one word, and go ahead and give us a follow, a rating, and a review. Absolutely. Really great stuff. And you can also find us on Bullhorn. All you have to do is just go on to your Android or Apple device, download the Bullhorn app and search keyword final score one word. And you can find us on there uh, for free. And that's the best thing about Bullhorn is that they put a new spin on listening to podcasts because Bullhorn's mission is to extend the reach of podcasts to everyone's ear, regardless of location or income. And no data or expensive smartphone is needed. Just stream from your device or call into your podcast of choice without using up any of your data. So why wouldn't you go on there, find final score give us a follow and a listen and remember it's all for free you can't go wrong with that and you know what else though you know what's not free patrick mahomes patrick mahomes is not free that guy is expansive that guy's very expansive to the tune of a 10-year 450 million dollar contract that can be worth up to 503 million dollars that's half a billion people half a billion what are your thoughts on this? This is this is this is unprecedented. Craig, we're going to start with you. Uh, I think it's it was bound to happen. It, it was bound to happen at some point. I mean, we've got you've got uh, Pat Mahomes, who at his age has done what many other players have not been able to do, and he's he's got that kind of arm talent, and that's what the market. That's what the market was worth. I mean, you were looking at guys that were already kind of pushing, you know, Dak Prescott's talking about trying to get maybe $40 million, which he's not worth. But no, no. <laughs> um, you got Pat Mahomes, and he's like, okay, I'll take that, and I'm going to one-up it, and we're going to do this. But the one thing that I think was really smart by the Kansas City Chiefs, they didn't tie it to a percentage of their salary cap. Most of the times with these big contracts, they tie it to a certain percent of the salary cap, so that way – um, it just kind of helps with tax and in far their cap from year to year. Uh, the Chiefs decided no, we're not we're not going to do that. So they wanted to give him and yeah, over 503 million after incentives. I mean, it's 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 crazy. This is now the largest contract in sports, mm -hmm. taking over Mike Trout's contract that he had with the Angels. Um, but it's yeah, the second longest tied for this or was it tied for the second longest yeah, with, tied for second i know longest. bledsoe had a big one and then uh mcnab your boy mcnab yep. had a really long contract as well yeah it wasn't worth it but you know at the end of the day that is what it is kevin what do you think um i it's a lot of money um to spend on a quarterback <laughs> and you're tied in for 10 years um but it's kind of fitting that patrick mahomes gets a baseball a baseball style contract out of this um, he's getting baseball money in the NFL, and that's fitting because didn't he? Who was he with um, signing? What team was it for the MLB? Was it the Tigers? He got drafted. By, he got drafted by the Tigers. Yeah. yeah. So that's our claim um, to fame. Yeah, we got Mahomes, <laughs> and we didn't have to pay for him. <laughs> hey, you know, I, was, I was scrolling through Twitter when the, this actual signing went down, and the best response I saw was University of Maryland, um, BC. Their athletic department just uh, tweeted at Patrick Mahomes, said, hey, Mahomes, we accept donations. <laughs> so I'm just going to throw that out there as well. Um, Mahomes, any donation you want to give me, whether small or large, um, I'm accepting those donations as well. <laughs> yes, as are UMBC, we. UMBC's <laughs> Twitter account, if you're not following that, it's hilarious. Like It's one of the, it's one of the funnier athletic department um, Twitter oh, yeah. accounts that's out there. They've... They it's they've been doing it for a couple of years. They've been throwing some some pretty uh some pretty nice heat on Twitter. It's been great. Oh yeah, oh, that's great. No, I don't like this contract because look at what even you pointed at the Detroit Tigers and let's bring them up for a second. Um, and we're gonna tie them in with Patrick Mahomes. Look at what they did with Miguel Cabrera. Miguel Cabrera was at the tip of uh like his prime. He gets this massive contract from the Tigers and look what happens after that. It's just been a downhill slope since that contract was signed. He didn't do anything after that contract was signed. Now he's uh, getting up there in age, and he's just not producing like the way he was in his younger days when he left the Marlins and came to us. Um, 
Mahomes, though, he's very young. He got this contract. Um, he's hopefully going to produce for the Chiefs for two, three years. But the trend is in the NFL is younger quarterbacks, younger talent. What happens when Trevor Lawrence gets into the league? What happens when these other young cats start producing? Um, and he starts getting towards the tail end of because it brings him out to 2031, this contract. What happens when he starts getting in his late 20s, early 30s? Um, but what was the the thing I found most impressive on this deal was even if he gets injured, it was like an insane amount in guarantees <laughs> for his injury million. clause. What was that guarantee? Uh, 145 million, something like that. Yeah, yeah that's insane. So even if we lose this guy to injury, we're still going to pay him 145, 146 million. That's yeah. what well, I found most impressive with the contract. Yeah, you're talking about Miguel Cabrera in Detroit. He was already kind of at the prime. He was he was older than Pat Mahomes is now uh, when he got that monster deal. But, like, you want to look at look at what happened when the Seattle Seahawks signed Russell Wilson to that massive contract at the time. Then what happened to the Seattle team? They couldn't pay for the Legion of Boom anymore. They couldn't, they couldn't bring in other guys to help. That's what I'm be worried about if I'm a Kansas City Chiefs fan. Yeah, you've got Pat Mahomes here now for 10 years. Uh, but who are you going to put around him? You're going to have to get really lucky in the draft, maybe sign some guys like Bill Belichick does at buy low, and then hopefully they perform to where they were. Um, Sammy Watkins comes to mind at, at, at the Chiefs. But you're going to have to hopefully get lucky in the draft and hit on guys in their rookie deals like a Tyreek Hill and, and other players like yeah. that. Now, here's where I'm going to disagree with you. This is the first time I'm going to disagree with you on the show, Craig, is you're going to have a lot of uh, professional athletes have came out after he signed that deal and said Patrick Mahomes is different. He has an aura about him. He has this friendliness about him. He has a personality that attracts people. So I think you're going to see a lot of high-profile NFL players sign smaller deals just to play with Mahomes. The same way when Brady was up in New England, people wanted to sign smaller contracts just to be able to put on that Patriots jersey and play with one of the greats and hopefully have that chance at a Super Bowl ring. Why go up and play in Detroit when you could go to Chiefs, sign a smaller contract, and win a Super Bowl? That's, That's very true. true, but think about think about this. You're not going to see a guy like – I'm just throwing this name out there because he's still there. Jadavion Clowney is not going to sign – guys, guys that want the money – they're still – they're not going to play. But I, I can see that where guys that um, – kind of like the LeBron James effect in the NBA when that happened mm -hmm. we went to Miami, mm -hmm. guys took less deals or, or, or smaller LeBron. deals to play in Miami with, with the big three. So I could see that, but I, th I still think you're going to run into – you're going to run into uh, issues on the Chiefs where guys like – Tyreek Hill is not going to take a pay cut as young as he is to – to stay in Kansas City. I, I highly doubt that. Mm -hmm. uh, guys on their defense are not going to – their defense isn't really that great anyway. But uh, you're not going to – I don't think you're going to see a lot of the young guys. You'll see veterans come in and play, and now it's just going to be a every year plug and play, and hopefully we can make it back to the Super Bowl mm. instead of trying to build the team through the draft, which is how you win in the NFL. Yes yeah. and no. Baby. You really don't need a good defense when you're exploding for 45-plus on the scoreboard every single week. That's true. That's true. But at the end of the day, we know defense also wins championships because you can't have a well-rounded team and be able to win a championship, you know, without having a defense. Because yeah, they can put up all the offensive numbers, but at the end of the day, Mahomes might be a special case. I don't think these contract contracts are going to become a regular thing. However, I, I kind of agree with both of you to a certain extent. I still think you need to build through the draft to a certain extent. I still think that you need to pay good players to a certain extent. But you need to understand that there's going to be players that want to get paid, and there's going to be players that want to win championships. That's the only two kind of players that you have in the NFL. So at the end of the day, you're going to see guys that are going to want to get paid, like Tyreek Hill, who knows his worth, and will definitely go to another team who has a quarterback that can throw the ball ball you know down the field like anybody else, and be able to make something happen versus you know staying, mm. getting less money, and yeah, win a few championships, but now you're in the shadow of, of Patrick Mahomes, and now the question becomes, oh, was the wide receiver really good, or was it Patrick Mahomes? So I can see a lot yeah. of guys, a lot of different lines of thinking that that they're going to approach the situation with, but. I think it's going to be a 50-50 split. Guys going to win titles, guys going to, to get paid. Yeah, and and just to want to throw this out here, uh one of my guys, one of my guys in the chat, uh Devin, uh mm -hmm. just tossed this out there point. just as a reminder, and it's very very true. It's a good point. NFL is the only non-guaranteed salary league traditionally of the Big 4. For every one major QB contract, there's 10 
guys who are released or cut from the practice squad or a team per year, injury or not. That's a great point mm -hmm. because a lot of these contracts you're starting to see are fully guaranteed, which would be Pat Mahomes. I know uh, Tristan Wirfs, I think, just signed a fully guaranteed yep. rookie contract, which is crazy, which we haven't even talked about yet. But that's a good point is that once you get to a certain point in the contract, Mahomes, his, his money, his value is it may not be worth it. So if he does get hurt and they do have the guaranteed injury, uh, the guaranteed injury portion of that contract, but if he gets near the end of this deal and he's in his mid thirties and he's not the Pat Mahomes that we see right now, mm -hmm. the well, Chiefs can lose easily a just say, "All right, well, well, we're we don't, we don't have only instead of having, uh, you know, thirty million this year, forty million this year in dead money, we only have like two million, three million in dead money. Let's go ahead and just cut him." Exactly. Exactly. But another big thing that I see with this, too, is that you have to look at it from the other side. You know, we, we, we speculate with Patrick Mahomes and, and this deal and everything. But the big thing I see is someone has to pay that. How smart of a move was this by Kansas City to pay this young quarterback? I know he's won an MVP. I know he's won a Super Bowl. But is it a smart move to pay him all this money now and really make this kind of a statement? Kevin, we're going to start with you. I mean, he brought a Super Bowl to Kansas City, so I think it's worth it to the Kansas City fans. I think it's worth it to the leadership there in Kansas City. They hadn't been Super Bowl champions in eons, so to have a, have a Super Bowl ring and hopefully have some other ones, they're trying to build what New England has had for the past 20 years. That's what they're trying to create there in Kansas City, and they have all the pieces to do it right now, so why not? I hate to be the GM to kind of sit on my hands and not do anything and not sign a major contract and have disgruntled players wanting the money and not giving it to them. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you lose all those pieces. Look what happened to that uh, time bomb that happened in Jacksonville. You had yeah. all the pieces. You were 10 minutes away from making a Super Bowl, and then you don't play your athletes and they all hit the road. And you lose every uh, window that you had to make another run at it. Yep. If only they had a quarterback. If only. <laughs> Only made a quarterback, <laughs> but I, but you're asking you're asking about was Pat Mahomes worth it? I forgot. I wanted to send you this graphic to show everybody, uh, Chris. But send it. I, I make saw this happen. on. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I saw this on. I'll try to send it right now. But I saw this on CBS Sports uh, on their Twitter account, and it was comparing Pat Mahomes' 2018 season to Dan Marino's 1984 season. Of course, that's mm. the season that everybody remembers with Dan Marino. And it was – both of them were 23 years old. And looking at the stat comparison of the two, it was mind-blowing. I mean, you're talking Pat Mahomes had a 66 per, uh, pass per, uh, percent completion. Marino was 64.2. Both threw for over 5,000 yards. Pat Mahomes was 50-97. Marino was 50-84. Marino threw for 48 touchdowns. Mahomes threw for 50. And yards per game was just about dead even. 318.6 to 317.8 for Marino. Like, if you're talking about is he worth it, especially in today's NFL where the Q, we're basically QB and offense driven, he's worth every penny right now. Now, he might get – he might get the Drew Bledsoe effect and get hurt the very next year and then give way to some other quarterback. But right now, he's absolutely worth it. And think about think about how these contracts go up and up every year. Remember, if anybody remembers, probably no one pays close enough attention except for me. Uh, actually, Kevin, you might too. But remember when Matt, when Matt Stafford signed a huge deal with, with Detroit Lions – and everybody was like, oh, my God, why are they paying him so much money? And this is a huge contract, and he doesn't have any help. Not even five years mm -hmm. later, he went from the number one valued contracts, APV, all the way down mm -hmm. to, like, 10 or 11. Like, it was like that. And we now have that so, graphic up as well. Hey, and the only, I work that. The, the, the only reason why the Lions are competitive is Matty Stafford. Like, that's the only reason. If you don't have Stafford, <clears throat> you don't win any games. So, I mean, granted, it's the Lions. We don't win many games anyways, but <laughs> you're not 8-8 eight eight Lions. You go back to the 0-16 Lions if you don't have Stafford on the field um, competing, a healthy Stafford. Um, he needs to be healthy. And mm -hmm. granted, he's been a horse for us these past few seasons. Granted, he had the back issues last year. But other than that, he's been steadfast there in the Lions offense.
Very true. Yeah, and you got to look at now with with Pat Mahomes and this contract. Look at the next QBs that are going to be up. Uh, I don't think Dak Prescott's going to get anywhere near it, but a guy like maybe Deshaun Watson, if Bill O'Brien really wants him that badly, will pay the money that uh, that J, uh, T, uh, J.J. Watt has already been saying, hey, he's worth this kind of money. Uh, and then down the road, you got other guys like if Trevor Lawrence ends up being the guy that everybody thinks he's going to be, if, if Tua or Joe Burrow end up doing very, very well in the NFL, those mm-hmm. guys, when their contracts come up, by the time Mahomes hits that tenth year or even the eighth or seventh year of that contract, I would not be surprised if he's not even in the top five for QB contracts. See, uh, Dak Prescott after the contract sign, he's probably like ringing up uh, Jerry, being like, "Where's my money at? Where's my money at?" <laughs> and Jerry's gonna go, "You're not worth that. You're a third round pick. Bye." <laughs> Dang, You're not worth any of those pennies. <laughs> Oh man, you know you know what else you could just do with Dak Prescott. <laughs> just saying, just saying. Hey, do you want to get do you want to get in that comparison of Prescott versus Wentz again? Do All right, so for again? so pretty, let's go ahead and move sure on. Let's go ahead and move on to our I'm next sure uh, to our next. You know what? Yeah, here's what I'm going to say. Super Bowl MVP is playing in Chicago right now. Yeah, you know what? I At least we still meme. have rings. I love the meme too. I for- I forgot we were going to do a little social media segment again this week, and we forgot we got tied up. But um, I saw the funniest meme, and it's an older one where it's the guy pointing at his head, and it's like the uh, the Bears have uh, the Bears not want not paying Pat Mahomes like can't pay him if he didn't draft him. <laughs> we we paid five hundred. <laughs> yep, that was that was great. That was great. Oh man. <laughs> Oh, it absolutely kills me. But you know what else is great? Radius Digital Marketing. Are you marketing. talking about Radius Digital Marketing? I am. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, let me give a shout out to these guys at Radius Digital Marketing. Alec and Sean, they've been extremely helpful in helping us build our brand, expanding our audience on social media. They specialize in ad management, lead generation, brand awareness, <laughs> and social media marketing. If you're looking to take your business to the next level, contact Alec at alecanusis at radiusdm.com for more information. That's Alec, A-L-E-K, Alec Anusis, A-N-U-Z-I-S, at radiusdm.com. That's right. Definitely make sure to check them out. You know, they've been such, such a huge help for us, so instrumental. You know, we just got to give them a little bit of an ovation. Because they've done so much great work for us, and uh, you know, I'm really happy where we're going. We're we're getting nearing that 1,000 mark finally on on Facebook. So uh, definitely been some exciting stuff there. Yeah, we're very close to that on Facebook. We're we're really close to that. We were at 920, I think it was. Yeah, something like that. I've I've, I've started like losing that. count. <laughs> I know, and on, on Twitter we've been kind of slowly growing. We've got 152 there. Uh, Instagram's been been kind of all over the place but uh, we're at uh, 111 so we're close kind of slowly climbing climbing the ladder as far as uh you know just getting getting more content out there um yeah but it's been great those guys have been a huge help for us absolutely but now it's time for this week in sports history and uh, definitely got some interesting ones this week. I'm going to go ahead and kick it off. Uh, July 10th, 2018, Real Madrid forward Cristiano Ronaldo joins Italian champions Juventus in a deal worth 99.2 million euro, becoming one of the four most expensive players of all time. That's I love your pronunciation of words. It's it's Juventus. You know, I get I get crazy sometimes, man. I'm like, uh, you know, Glorious Bastards, you know, Bongerno. So, you know. <laughs> Bongerno. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll, we'll move on. Uh, July 11th, 1914, future baseball Hall of Fame slugger Babe Ruth makes his MLB debut as a pitcher for the Boston Red Sox. He earns a 4-3 win against the Cleveland Naps at Fenway Park. Cleveland Naps, that's a name that the Indians should go back to because it's basically what their team's going to be doing in, this year. Napping. <laughs> ouch. Just, just, just ouch. Need some ice for that burn. Anyways, July 11th, 2012, Steve Nash is traded by the Phoenix Suns to the L.A. Lakers. How'd that work out? Well, he was already over the hill at that point, uh, not really in the MVP caliber that we had 
come to see from Steve Nash. So it made it made some sense. Plus, the Lakers were trying to make another push at a title. Uh, July 12th, 1979, the famous Disco Demolition Night happened at Comiskey Park. Fans go wild to join <laughs> disco records. It caused the White Sox to forfeit the second game of a doubleheader to none other than the Detroit Tigers because they did it on the field. Everything was on fire, and it was it turned into a riot, essentially. Yeah, the good old anti-disco time, man. <laughs> oh, so much craziness. July 12th, 19th. Try doing, try doing something like that nowadays in 2020. Oh. Yeah, yeah, have fun with that. <laughs> July 12, 1990, the Chicago White Sox, uh, Melito Perez, no hits the Yankees, 8 nothing in a rain-shortened six-inning game at Yankee Stadium, and it was the seventh no-hitter of 1990. On July 13, 2001, the International Olympic Committee votes to award Beijing the 2008 Summer Olympic Games. Oof. Craziness. July 14th, 1951, in his last race, the 1948 Triple Crown Champion Citation wins the Hollywood Gold Cup by four lengths to become America's uh, American Racing, sorry, first millionaire horse. And July 15th, year 2000, Kevin, this one's for you. Mm -hmm. World record rugby attendance of 108,874. See New Zealand beat Australia 39 to 35 in Tri Nations match at Stadium Australia in Sydney. Five tries each with Andrew Mirton's goal kicking six being the difference in that game. Yeah. Absolutely. If you haven't watched that, go on YouTube, type it in. They got the full game up on YouTube. You can go ahead and watch that game. Fantastic game. Great environment. Absolutely. July 15th, 2018, Filipino boxing legend Manny Pacquiao stops WBA welterweight champion Lucas Mathisi in seven in Kuala Lumpur for his first knockout in nine years and his 60th career victory. On July 15th, 2019, just last year, mm. Tampa Bay catcher Travis Denard uh, becomes the first player in MLB history to hit three home runs while catching and batting leadoff in the Rays 5-4 win over the New York Yankees. Absolutely crazy. And this one's for you, Craig. On July 16th, 1956, the Detroit Tigers and Briggs Stadium are sold for a then-record $5.5 million. Historic stadium, Briggs Stadium. Uh, we had, we've had we had a pre few iconic stadiums in, uh, in Detroit, which, quick shout-out, and kind of a um, kind of a happy trails moment. The Palace of Auburn Hills was demolished yesterday. Mm -hmm. That is had been one of the most well known uh, stadiums if, at its time. It was kind of a, on the high tech end in the late '80s when they built it, uh, and even un, up until they left mm -hmm. and went to Little Caesars Arena downtown Detroit. Palace was still one of the top ten, top fifteen stadiums as far as. Uh, upkeep and everything like that mm -hmm. in the NBA. So it was really sad to see it go. I had so many great memories at the Palace and uh, still have yet to see a game at LCA. Yeah. I uh, I have seen a game at LCA. It's phenomenal. So when you get back to, up to Detroit, make sure you go visit it. They do a free tour of the stadium. It's phenomenal. Um, the Palace, a lot of great memories. The question I have for <laughs> you, Craig, though, were they successful in the demolition the first time? Because I know the Pontiac Silverdome, they tried to <laughs> blow it up several times. It didn't work. <laughs> Uh, it did happen on the first try, yes. Okay, I watched good. some video that it, it kind of just – it happened really, I guess, too well. It just – everything just kind of fell, collapsed pretty quickly. But, um, but like yeah. Like Detroit's that, economy. Yeah, pre pretty much. It's on the Ouch. upswing. It's back Ouch. on the upswing. I don't know. I've, I, was, I was in Detroit uh, last year for a wedding, and it was just outside of Detroit, and – uh, got a chance to go walk around downtown. It looks a lot better now than it was even five years ago, even three years ago. Oh, for sure, for sure. It's it's nice. It's on the upswing, but yeah, Michigan's economy not not too great at the moment. <laughs> oh my goodness, absolutely craziness. But uh, you know, one thing I do remember for the palace, the malice in the palace. Probably one of the most infamous moments to come out of there. Uh, but you know what? Definitely got to talk about some other things through the good old give or go. And I'm going to throw this first one out to you. We'll go ahead and start with you, Craig. The NFL is banning jersey swaps between players after games, but won't require masks for coaches and players on the sideline. Give or go. Get, 
what, 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 this doesn't make sense. Like the NFL is like, Hey, we're not going to let you do Jersey swaps in the game. I understand. Cause maybe like things are sweaty and all that kind of stuff. But, um, why you're not like all those people on the sideline, all the coaches and the players, you've got a roster of 56 players plus coaches, plus the, the, you've got the, the, the medical team, you've got the, you know, the, like the water, the water boys and, and, and girls and stuff like that. You've got all those people on the sideline and you're not going to let them wear masks. You don't want them to wear masks, <laughs> but it doesn't, this doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Very NFL. This also, this almost seems like NCAA logic. <laughs> Kevin, do you agree? No, oh, I agree. Is hey, we're gonna let people tackle each other for the entire game, but we're not gonna allow you to swap jerseys at the end. Makes no sense. Um, it's just a talking point for the NFL. It's a chance to throw it out there. Um, are they still doing jersey swaps in soccer? Because I know this is very popular in uh, soccer, um, where they swap the jerseys at the end. I think that's where it kind of got its start. Yeah, mm. I think I think they sure. stopped that for this year, just for now. But mm-hmm. yeah, this is absolutely where it came from. Soccer. And who's- Who's going to enforce it? No one's going to enforce it. Like if, right. if you have a Patrick Mahomes out there and making five hundred million, he goes up to his buddy on the opposite team and they swap jerseys. Who's going to come come and say, "No, you can't do that, Mahomes. You can't swap jerseys." You're just the face of it's our league. Classic, classic, yeah, classic NFL fashion. They're going to wait till after the game and then fine them like five million dollars or something stupid just for yeah. saying, "Hey, you shouldn't have done that." And he's got. I've got five hundred million dollars coming my way. What's five million to me? I don't really care. Yeah. Mm. Also true. Definitely very crazy all the way around. It seems very inconsistent, like you said, with NCAA logic behind it. But it just it doesn't make any sense. And you're gonna have everybody that are gonna be playing against each other, tackling and everything, like Kevin said. So everybody's gonna be up in each other's grills no matter what. So what's the point? <laughs> so it doesn't make a whole yep. lot of sense. Ugh. Definitely does not. And the, the second topic for give or go today, mm-hmm. I'm going to toss this up to you, Chris, and then Kevin. Uh, the NHL wants to start their 2020-2021 season on December 1st. Wow. Give or go. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give on this just a little bit, though. Uh, that's definitely a very small you know, turnaround for what they're trying to do with trying to knock out the season. However, with what I've seen between the NHL and the NHL Players Association, They've just been knocking things out, getting everything done. They just extended their CBA and ratified their return to play with the Players Association. So now everything is 110% in concrete, and they're ready to go. And now they're going to be back to play August 1st with a five-game slate and are really ready to get this thing going, knock this thing out, and turn it right around and have their next season. I think, honestly, the NHL could pull this off. And if it becomes their new norm, uh, it would definitely be interesting to see how it overlaps with other seasons because now you're going to see the NHL season possibly push uh, into the boundary of college football and the NFL now. So it's going to be real interesting to see how it all works out in that type of respect. But, uh, I mean, hey, hats off to the NHL for making it happen. Yeah, Kevin. Oh, I'm I'm stoked with the NHL is getting this going um, because if there is a void left by football, you're going to see viewership go up in the NHL. Um, if anyone doesn't have a team, make sure you uh, root for the Detroit Red Wings, the uh, most winningest team in the United States. I can't say because the Habs fans I know will get all over me in the comments. Um, That's right. But yeah, winningest team in the United States. Detroit Red Wings, but I'm excited to see this, but uh, up from viewership, you're going to see a rise in injuries. Yeah. Um, the wear and tear of a regular, regular NHL season is brutal. Um, it's a lot of wear and tear on the uh, lower extremities, and you're going to see injury numbers start to pile up if you demand so much out of your players. I'm wondering how the Players Association is going to react to this um, because you're, you're demanding a lot of the body. Um, and I know rugby is very similar to NHL, the abuse that the body takes from a regular season. So if you cramp the second season and have a start date on December 1st, you're expecting a lot of demand out of these uh, out of these players. And I'm wondering how coaches are going to do this. Are they going to lean more on their second, third, fourth lines um, to kind of mm-hmm. uh, alleviate some time on the ice some from some for some of these high profile players, or are you just going to see what they do in the NBA? Some of these players sit out some games to kind of have that rest period for their bodies to heal up. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, load management is going to play a big role. And I think you're going to see a lot of guys in the minor league system from the AHL come on up uh, in spurts. Uh, I'm really, I'm really surprised that this is something we haven't heard more about, but you know, ESPN doesn't care if it's not 
Zion or LeBron or NFL or NBA. Like they don't care. Uh, mm-hmm. So this is why we haven't heard much about it. I'm a, I'm a little surprised that they've been pushing everything through the, with the CBA so quickly because NHL is not as bad as MLB as far as the the strikes and everything is concerned. But they've had their share. They've had their share of just not being able to get things done at the mm-hmm. at the uh, at the negotiation table. So hats off to the to the NHL and the NHLPA for getting this stuff done. Uh, I'm a little I'm a little concerned about like you mentioned, Kevin, with crunching these two seasons together so quickly. I think we're going to run into some issues, but uh, I agree. I think the NHL could and it could end up inevitably be the beneficiary of these other sports maybe not doing so well. I like how they did a couple of bubble areas instead of just one or something like that. So I think uh, I think it should be pretty good. Uh, and being an NHL fan myself, uh, yes, get all on board the Red Wings train. We're not going to be good this year, but hey, <laughs> we've got a great farm system, and we are ready for the future. I can't. Uh, Stevie Y is doing good things there. I like his draft picks. I like the way he's bringing in this leadership onto the team. Um, Stevie's going to do good things for us. And Stevie, we trust. And Chris, what do you say his name is? You pronounced it so so eloquently a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Bag of garbage. <laughs> Go Flyers. So at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, though, the Flyers are going to be the team to follow. That's right. The good old orange and black. And uh, maybe finally we can get over a hump of, you know, losing so many Stanley cups in a row anyways we'll see how it works out but that is the end of give or go and now brings us to the week ahead and what do we have on tap for uh for the good old stream team there craig i've been swamped with work man i have not been able to get on streaming um this nightmare needs to end at some point soon so i can get back on streaming uh i am hoping fingers crossed maybe this week i'm not sure it's kind of on hiatus for now yeah, we'll definitely see how that ends up working out. And, uh, of course, next week, though, we will have episode 66. So make sure to join us and keep an eye out roughly midweek for when that will drop. And we'll let you know exactly what day and time that will be. Uh, hopefully, uh, we keep going and making some great advances and trying to get the show nice and cleaned up for everybody so you can actually enjoy it, unlike last week's show, uh, which uh, we'll see still <laughs> what happens with that. We have not released it yet because of all the technical issues. So uh, that one's in kind of a wait-and-see period right now. Uh, Kevin, anything before we sign off? Uh, we got round 10 coming up this upcoming starting on Thursday morning. Um, so I'm going to have all the scores and updates coming out of the NRL next week on our show. Um, we also have an interview that hasn't dropped yet. I got the opportunity to sit down with an old friend of mine, R.W. Cooper. Um, you guys know him as Coop. Um, a lot of great stories coming out of this individual. He's pretty much uh, backpacked and drove all over the country and played rugby from Key West all the way up to Ohio. So I got the opportunity to sit down and talk with him. A lot of great content coming out of that individual, great friend of mine. Even though he is an Ohio State Buckeye fan, that's his only uh, black mark on that. It's kind of interesting that we have a relationship, but that's how rugby is with uh, (laughs) me being a Michigan fan, him being Ohio State. But rugby brings us together, so a lot of uh, great stories and reminiscing there um, out of that interview. So check the drop date on that. Make sure you guys stay in tune, updated on that. Um, Hopefully, I'm going to be talking to leadership from the Jacksonville Axemen this week. So I'll have more updates on what's coming out of the Axemen. I'm also going to reach out to my friend out in Jamaica, Romeo Monteith, and see what's going on with the Jamaica team as they prepare for the 2021 World Cup. So I'll have a lot of information and updates. Make sure you guys check in to either my Facebook page or the Final Score page for more of your rugby news. Definitely, definitely. And we'll definitely have more info on the when that interview will drop as well. Uh, should hopefully be the early part of this week, but we'll definitely see how things work out. Obviously, uh, life is crazy for all, so we'll kind of see how, how things go. But thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we'll definitely be able to see you next week. <clears throat> Excuse me. But until then, make sure to follow us on social media at PCN Final Score on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, Twitch and Instagram make sure to give us a like and a follow that way you can stay up to date on everything that we post and of course all of our great live episodes that we bring you every single week but until then I'm Chris that's Craig and Kevin and you guys just watch final score y'all have a great night
Podcast City Network.